Hello everyone and thank you for watching my channel. In this episode, I am going to be talking to you about some benefits of deep breathing. I have been practicing yoga and deep breathing for 15 years now and can attest to the benefits of why deep breathing is super important for your health and well-being. As you all may or may not know, I am an active duty Navy nurse and therefore have um, a job that can put me in some pretty stressful situations where I use deep breathing to maintain my calm. I also work with post-op patients who I teach deep breathing exercises to um, so that they can maintain and improve their respiratory function and not develop atelectasis or pneumonia after their surgery. What are the benefits of deep breathing? It allows your body to fully exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, which is important so you can eliminate carbon dioxide waste and replenish oxygen for your tissues. Uh, deep breathing also increases energy. It decreases stress and it also aids in calming your mind. So how does it aid in calming your mind? When you are anxious or when you are stressed out, your brain releases cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Uh, by taking deep breaths, your heart rate slows down, more oxygen enters your bloodstream, and it signals your brain to relax. Deep breathing also increases endorphins, which are the feel-good chemicals. Deep breathing also lowers your blood pressure, which helps your muscles to relax and your blood vessels to dilate so you can get more oxygen and improve your circulation. Deep breathing can also improve your digestion because the more healthier blood flow you produce promotes your organs to function more efficiently, including your intestines. So how do we breathe? We breathe in and out all day, every day, without a thought because our medulla oblongata, I like saying that, medulla oblongata, uh, the respiratory center in our brain signals our body to breathe without even having to think about it. So chances are many of us don't even take really deep breaths throughout the day because we don't have to think about it. But we have control, right? We have control over how deep a breath we can take. So how do we do it? I will show you two techniques. There's a bunch of breathing exercises, but I'll show you two in this video that you can practice every day to get the benefits of deep breathing. The first exercise is deep breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. So you can sit on the floor or on the couch in a cross-legged position or whatever's comfortable for you, or you can lie down on your back. And what you'll do is you're going to take an inhale for five seconds and then exhale for five seconds. So inhale through your nose and exhale out of your mouth. So it will look like this, inhale, exhale, and then we'll do it two more together. Inhale for five seconds, exhale for five seconds. Inhale, exhale, Inhale, exhale. So even if you just practice that for this little bit of time, hopefully you can feel already your mind is a little bit clearer, you feel a little bit more relaxed. I know I did. And then just remember when you're inhaling, it's not a sniffing like, Inhale, it's more like um, inhale through the back of your throat. In yoga, we call it ujjayi breathing or breath of fire. So it's more like, 
So breathing in through your throat and through your nose. So not a, but a more like, and then exhale, deep exhale. So that's one way to practice deep breathing. Another way is alternate nostril breathing. So this is one of my favorites because I really feel like it clears my mind and also it clears my sinuses as well. So before you do this one, you wanna make sure if you have any congestion, you can exhale it all out to open up your nostrils. You might have some snot fly out like I just did, totally normal. So this one, same thing, it, you can sit or lie, but it, it feels a little bit better if you're sitting up. So you are going to use your thumb and then your third and fourth fingers. So you're going to cover one nostril with your third and fourth fingers. Inhale through the right, cover the right with your thumb, and then exhale out of your left. So with this one, you're inhaling for five seconds through one nostril and then exhaling for five seconds out of the alternate or other nostril. So it looks like this. And then inhale. Exhale. So we can do that together. We'll start with the left nostril covered, inhaling through the right, and then cover the right nostril, exhaling through the left. All right, so we'll start, inhale, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So that's another way you can practice deep breathing. So either the inhale, exhale through your nose and mouth or inhale, exhale through your alternate nostrils. And both of those you can practice every single day. Find a quiet space for about 10 minutes. That's all you need, quiet space. Um, and then practice either one of those for 10 to 20 times. And you will feel like you can breathe easier, improved circulation, and increased mental clarity and calmness. The last thing that I'm going to talk to you about in this episode is about the incentive spirometer or volumetric exerciser. So it looks like this. If you've ever stayed in the hospital or had a surgery, you probably have used this. Um, every post-op patient gets one of these. They're ordered by the doctor and it is my job as a nurse to teach the patient how to use it and to make sure that they're actually using it properly. So post-operative patients, they are at particular risk of respiratory complications because they aren't usually taking deep breaths, um, usually due to pain or immobility. They just want to stay in bed post-operatively. So this device here, it helps patients, it's a tool um, so that they can use to practice deep breathing. So each patient, they get their own. Um, in our hospital, we have the Hudson version um, or Voldyne 2500, and it comes actually with a little pamphlet on how to use it. So there is a chart here for female males, and it goes by height and in inches and then age in years. So on the exerciser, it has the number of inspired volume in milliliters. And this goes by this chart here. It's what normals should be based on height and age. So um, what it helps you, a patient do is to practice deep breathing 
while they're in the hospital so that they don't get a collapsed lung or pneumonia. I'll show you how to use it. So I, for example, am going to do a 38 year old female that's 63 inches. So if we go by this chart, it will say 38 year old female and then 63 inches would be about 2,250 milliliters of inspiratory capacity. Um, and what it's measuring is inspired lung volume. And what it does is when someone is taking a deep, deep breath, it is expanding the alveoli, the little air sacs in the lungs and expanding the lung so the lung has a chance to increase oxygen and then exhale CO2 or carbon dioxide from the body. So how do we use it? Um, we attach this blue little slinky thing um, to the main um, plastic piece here. And we said for a 38 year old, uh, that's 63 inches, it's gonna be about 2250 milliliters. So we'll move this little yellow piece here to 2250. And what we're trying to do is, you see this little yellow or white piece here. We're trying to keep it in the best area. So it says good, better, best. Um, you put the plastic piece in your mouth and create a tight seal. So you're going to inhale and then take it out, exhale. So what I see patients normally do is try to go like this really fast. But yeah, it's giving your lungs a big breath, but what we're trying to do is inhale over time so the lungs have a chance to really expand. So I'm trying to keep this little spot in the best, and then when I inhale, this white plastic piece is going to rise and rise and rise until I get to my prescribed um, milliliters or inspired volume. So it looks like this, I'm gonna inhale, or first you exhale and then inhale. And then you exhale it out. And normally what we'll tell patients to do is practice this 10 times every hour while they're awake. And it's actually not easy to do. I am a normal, healthy, um, active, physically fit female. And just doing that, slowing it down and to expand my lungs to reach that um, prescribed amount, it's actually pretty difficult to do. So you can imagine if you have a post-operative patient um, who's in pain, maybe they had abdominal surgery and it's really hard to take deep breaths, you could imagine how much harder it would be for them. Um, but it's a really great way to, to decrease respiratory complications in post-operative patients. That's all I have for this episode. I hope you learned something or expanded your knowledge. And if you have any questions, comments, any ideas that you would like me to do a video on, please drop them in the comments below. And as always, stay safe, healthy, happy. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.